Hello everyone, this is our Hawaiian Volcano Summary for July 25th, 2024. Over the last four days, there's been an intrusion of magma into Kilauea's Upper East Rift Zone, accompanied by over 1,500 earthquakes. It has caused uplift of the ground in this area between Pauahi Crater and Mauna Ulu, centered more or less here, as you can see on the background image from the USGS based on satellite radar data here. So there have been four major pulses of earthquakes in the last four days. Uh, they've progressed down to this bend of the, of the rift zone between the upper east rift connector here and the middle east rift zone at Mauna Ulu. And this is an area where many intrusions have a hard time turning this bend in the rift zone. And it seems like this one may be experiencing similar effects. This fourth pulse happening today has migrated back up rift to Ko'oko'olau crater right in here. And it looks like uh, the, the ground deformation may be slowing as we speak. There's some complexity in here. I will show you guys this uh, raw map of the radar imagery of where the ground is swelling. And you can see the inflation center right over here, not far from the Mauna Ulu Fisher Trail in a national park and west of the Mauna Ulu Lava Shield itself. Now there are several faults in this area. There's one right here that seems to be one of the, these major faults of the Kauai Fault System, which is largely to the west here. But you can see that these rainbow fringes are actually displaced and offset by this fault, suggesting there's been movement here in the fault as well. Not only that, beyond our normal concentric bullseye pattern, we have some of this kind of fingerprinting swirling going on where some of these fringes turn back on themselves like that. So there is certainly some complexity of movement happening in this area near the fault where the ground has been swelling. The nearest tilt meter is near the escape road by Pauahi Crater, more or less in here. And it has been the main signal that we see expressing ground tilt. The scale here is massive. We're looking at 120 microradians from top to bottom on the escape road with our blue vector, which is pointing north-south, dropping from around zero to more or less negative 55 or so. So a huge amount of ground tilt down in the north-south direction. Similarly, there's been some tilt in the east-west direction, but not as large a magnitude over there. Here, if we zoom it in, you can see the various pulses. There was a first one on the 22nd, the second one on the 23rd, in the times in between, deformation progressed, continuing, although not in as quick a pulse. And then we have our third pulse yesterday and our fourth pulse this morning. And as of right now, it appears to have been flattening. And so we'll see if the dike intrusion uh, has another phase in it still, or whether it is in its waning uh, chapter at this point. This is on the rift zone. Further away at the summit, this is the Uekahuna tilt station, which after a small delay on the 23rd began to deflate and is now suggesting that magma is draining from the underground summit areas to feed this upper east rift intrusion. This is visible also in a pattern at Sand Hill. We're here with a much larger scale. We're showing a similar amount of tilt drop, both from the main summit caldera area as well as in the green component here from that Southwest Rift Connector area, both of which have been building up with pressure following the eruption on June 3rd in the Southwest Rift. So all this has led to earthquake counts that are close to 500 per day over the last couple of days, which are similar to what we saw during the last pulse of intrusion in the Upper East Rift at the beginning of July, end of June. That one did not cause an eruption, and that was related to inflation of the summit reservoir, whereas now we're actually seeing ground deformation on the East Rift itself for the first time since uh, the 2021 post-2018 era. So those are the earthquake rates for the last month. And from the USGS update today, I'll just skip down to where they put out the... Uh, 
um, analysis. Oh, maybe this is the wrong one here. Um, but essentially, there are three possible outcomes of what the volcano could do. The intrusion could continue underground, still swelling, and without any eruption. Uh, it could lead to a small eruption in this upper East Rift area. However, the USGS has noted that there have been 50 intrusions in this area in the past, of which only five eventually erupted. So the more likely outcome at this point seems like it remains an intrusion, unless the third option being that the earthquakes migrate further down a rift into the Middle East rift zone proper. And once they make that bend and make that turn, then that opens a different set of possibilities and scenarios. So we'll have to wait to see what happens, but that is a story here on Kilauea. Mauna Loa is much quieter. Well, first, let me show you the map of Kilauea. Here's where the earthquakes cluster just for the past week, colored by depth. So this is that area. You can't even see the craters under the upper east rift beneath all these earthquakes. All right, so now to Mauna Loa, which has an earthquake map that looks much more sparse with a few events showing background activity over the last month. But looking at all the signals, including the GPS, we don't really see any change in the data. So very little obvious influence of Kilauea on Mauna Loa at this time. And that's our Hawaiian volcano summary for July 25th.